Hi, my name is Daniel Jacobson, and I'm a program manager on Visual Studio. And today I'm here to tell you all about .NET Native and what it means for your traditional developer workflow. So as you can see on my slide, the consumers are pretty excited about the Windows platform right now. All of their apps are blazing fast. They start up fast, they run fast, and it almost seems magical, but it's not. Um, it's actually a result of .NET Native, and it does have some implications to you as a developer. Um, some of the things you may encounter are some interesting crashes that you haven't seen before, some different behavior, but for the most part, it should be pain-free, and this video is just going to focus on your normal developer workflow. The next video will focus more on getting rid of some of these issues that you may encounter. So to begin with, when you create a new universal Windows platform application in C Sharp or VB, you are opted in to .NET Native. There is no opt-out. All C Sharp and VB applications use it. And the technology, it compiles your uh, intermediate language binaries down to native code. So that means you get, think, C++ performance with the development experience of C Sharp. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. Um, and what that means is your edit, build, debug loop is very similar to what you're used to. You get exactly the .NET development story that you've grown accustomed to over the years. Um, the one difference here is that you no longer have the any CPU option. Uh, since we're compiling down to native code, any CPU doesn't really make any sense. So what I recommend for your typical development day is to stick with debug on x86, and that gives you the flexibility to deploy to both your local machine or an emulator. Obviously, you can switch to ARM to deploy to devices, etc. cetera. Um, but this package will actually compile your application to intermediate language binaries running against an app locally packaged core CLR, um, which is really cool. That means you get the really, really fast F5 experience that you've grown used to over the years, the great, rich debugging environment, etc. When you switch over to release, as you traditionally should have, and as you definitely should now, uh, your application actually automatically invokes the .NET native toolchain locally. So that means the compiler is doing its work, making your application just run native code, and everything is inlined into the app. And what that means is the compile time will take a little bit longer, and you may also experience some different runtime behavior. So I highly encourage you to test this configuration about every four hours or so. If you go weeks and weeks at a time without testing release, and then you're getting ready to publish, and you test release and find an error, you're going to have a lot of code to dig through to try and figure out what's going on. The last kind of developer workflow implication is when you're getting ready to upload your package to the store. Traditionally, with the Windows platform, it didn't matter which package you uploaded to the store because, generally speaking, they all contained the same content. That's no longer the case. So with .NET Native, you have both .NET Native packages and your MSIL packages. And one interesting feature of .NET Native is that the compiler is hosted in the cloud by the store. So that means when you upload your application package to the store, the store compiles it for you. And the reason for this is because, hopefully this will never happen, but if there were any security issues or any reason that the application needs to be recompiled as quickly as possible so your customers can get an update, the store has the flexibility to do that for you. So you shouldn't need to actually interact with it. Don't worry, though. The compiler that the store uses is the same exact compiler that you will be using locally to test your package because that information is stored in the manifest. So you shouldn't expect any different behavior once the store compiles your application, assuming you did your diligence testing it locally. So let's take a look at what this actually means for you. So here I have an application that I've been working on for quite some time now. It's a Cookbook Universal Windows app. Um, you may recognize it from one of my other Channel 9 videos. But I'm getting ready to publish it to the store. I think it's ready to go. As you can see, I'm in debug mode, targeting x86 and local machine. And that's typical. That's how I spend most of my day. Uh, I already did some testing in release mode, and now I'm getting ready to submit. So I'm going to right click, go to Store, Create App Packages. When it says, do you want to build packages to upload to the Windows Store, I'm absolutely going to say yes. If I do not say yes here, I will not generate the AppX upload, and that is the only file that is valid for store submission with the Universal Windows Platform. I've already signed in, so I'm just going to continue. And I will associate my application with the product that I've already created, Universal Cookbook. So a couple interesting things to note before I go ahead and click Create is that you no longer have access to the revision number. If I deselect automatically increment, uh, I can only change the build number. And this is essentially how we enable the store to revise your package if they have to. So if there was any reason that the store has to recompile your application, they would use the revision number to publish the update as quickly as possible. What this means, not necessarily for you directly, but if you have kind of automated build systems going on in the background that typically uh, iterated this package version, you want to make sure that you're changing the build number now, not the revision number. If you try to upload something with a revision number that is non-zero, the store will reject it. The other thing I wanted to point out is that generate app bundle is 
defaulted to always now. And this is because we also select all three build configurations. With the Universal Windows platform, your target devices could include PCs, phones, Surface Hubs, Xbox, HoloLens, Internet of Things devices, etc. Um, and what that means is if you build for every single configuration, your application will be valid on more devices, which means more potential users. So I encourage you to keep all of these select as well. Um, the other thing you'll note is I can't select debug here. Uh, when I do my package creation for store submission, I'm using release. And that's by design. That's how it's always been. So I'll hit Create. And we'll let that run. All right, so after we've created our package, we can take a look at the contents that are generated. Um, and as you can see, there's two things that are generated. I've got my single AppX upload file. And you'll notice it has my x86, my x64, and my ARM package all bundled up. So this is the only file I need to upload to the store. It makes it really convenient. I also have a test package, uh, which is generated using the .NET Native compiler. Uh, so this is a package that I could sideload to a device or to my desktop to test the application in the environment closest to what my end user is going to get. Uh, this is generally a good idea before uploading to the store. You want to make sure that your customers will get the best package possible. Um, so that's pretty much it for this video. That's what you need to do to think about your new workflow. Um, one thing that I do want to highlight before leaving you for the next videos is that you should run WAC before submitting to the store as well. That will catch whether or not you're building the right package or if you have any other issues that may fail store submission. Thanks.